So today is Saturday, uh, February 26, and it's the third day of the invasion of Ukraine by Russia. Now, the people in the United States do not seem to understand what is going on insofar as Russia's invasion is concerned, because they keep saying that uh, Russia is failing which is the weirdest comment. Russia is failing because Russia hasn't taken out the infrastructure of, uh, of Ukraine, hasn't hit the uh, electrical grid, hasn't uh, destroyed the uh, cell phone towers or, or, or the water supply or something like that. Uh, it, it, it's just remarkable. They, they keep insisting that the Russians seem to advance and then retreat whenever they meet any resistance. Mm -hmm. And it's it's just a failure of imagination on the part of so many American commentators that they do not seem to understand what Russia is really doing with this invasion. Because you see, the American mode of war is to go to a country and destroy everything. Destroy the electrical grid, cell towers, the water supply system, everything. Just destroy the whole thing and then roll in. That's not fighting a war. That's just uh, mopping up the total annihilation of a country. And the United States has done this repeatedly in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in Libya, in Syria, or they semi tried to do it in Syria. I mean, it's really kind of like a despicable way of, of making war, right? But what are the Russians doing? Well, see, the Russians, they don't want to destroy Ukraine. No, they don't want to destroy it at all. What they want to do is they want to capture it intact see and they don't want to hurt the civilians why would they from their point of view if they harm civilians they just create enemies and so they want to capture ukraine change the political leadership of ukraine and install a political leadership that is sympathetic to russia's security needs and is going to be a long-term ally but they don't want to alienate the Ukrainian population. Because if they alienate the Ukrainian population, well, the Ukrainian population will eventually overthrow this puppet regime. And the Russians want to install a puppet regime. Let's not pretend otherwise. But they want to install a puppet regime whereby the Ukrainian citizens are more or less indifferent to it. They don't want to install a puppet regime after having made the lives of Ukrainians so miserable. So that's why they don't want to destroy Ukraine or harm the Ukrainian populace. They want to capture Ukraine intact, change the political leadership, and then let it go. Of course, because they don't want to manage Ukraine. They don't want it to be a burden on them. They don't want that long term. And so what are they doing? They are rapidly invading the whole country, and, and everybody concedes that they're moving very, very quickly. But they're not hitting any civilian infrastructure. They're only hitting military targets. And they are relentless in hitting the military targets, but always with a certain degree of caution. And I'll explain why in just a moment. But they're hitting military targets. They are avoiding civilian populations and civilian infrastructure. And when they go to a city or a destination, when they encounter any resistance from the Ukrainian army, any serious resistance, they stop and pull back. Because what are they doing? They are encircling. That's their whole strategy. And it's very simple. And if you look at a map, you'd realize it. What the Russians are doing is that whenever they go to a major city like Kiev, like Kharkov, and soon enough, they're going to be in Dnipro. When they get to those cities, they go up to those cities and they meet some resistance and then they pull back. And they allow their forces to start to surround it. And that's the strategy they're employing in Kiev. That's the strategy that they're employing in Kharkov. They are encircling these cities. And once they've completely encircled them, what will they do? They'll wait. That's what they'll do. See, if you surround a city, all you have to do is just wait around. Eventually, it'll fall, of course. And so the Russians are systematically surrounding all of the major cities. And whenever they come across a smaller town or, or village, 
they just advance and cover it and capture it and move on and continue with their advance. Whenever they meet any kind of serious resistance, they stop, pull back, and then encircle. One of the things that they want to capture intact, and people don't seem to realize this, but it's very obvious if you think about it, they are trying to capture the Ukrainian army. That's not why there hasn't been any major battles with you know, hundreds or thousands of casualties. It's been light skirmishes. For all intents and purposes, the Russian army is tiptoeing into Ukraine. Insofar as air power is concerned, the Russians in the first three hours wiped the Ukrainian skies of everything. The Russians own the Ukrainian skies. Any plane flying is Russian. But insofar as their army is concerned, this isn't World War II. This isn't a World War II where the Russian armies were, were you know, I mean, just, you know, kissing cousins of the Mongol hordes. You know what I'm saying? No, this is the modern Russian army that has the goal of capturing intact Ukraine and the Ukrainian army. Because the Russians realize that once they have captured Ukraine and changed the political leadership, they will need an army to protect and look after the Ukrainian state and the Ukrainian people and the Ukrainian land. They don't want to destroy the Ukrainian army. They could do that if they wanted to. They would have done that already. They own the skies over Ukraine. Their goal is to capture Ukraine, capture the Ukrainian army with as little casualties as possible to the Ukrainian army. And that's why whenever they come up against serious Ukrainian resistance, they keep consistently pulling back. And in the West, this is interpreted as the Russians are weak, which is so weird. Mm -hmm. It's like the Russians are so weak, they're not advancing as fast. I mean, well, that is a separate issue that I'm going to get to in just a moment. But the Russians are so weak because they're not obliterating the Ukrainian army. Because that's what the Americans do. They obliterate anything that crosses their path. Friend or foe, they don't really care. But the Russians do care. That's why they're not obliterating the Ukrainian army when they could. A friend of mine, Alex Christoforou, uh, and the Duran, great show, he pointed out something that I'd never considered, which is very obvious. He pointed out the fact that, you see, the current Ukrainian leadership in the military, the generals, in Ukraine, they went to military academies with the generals of the Russian armies. They're drinking buddies since when they were back in like 18 year old, 19 year old uh, plebes. Mm -hmm. They know each other. They don't wanna kill each other. Of course not. I mean, you've got some buddy when you were drinking out when you were 18, right? You wanna kill him? No, you could be on opposing sides of whatever contest, but you don't wanna hurt him. Of course not. Uh, you'll be pissed off at him, maybe, but you don't want to kill him. The Russian army doesn't want to destroy the Ukrainian army. They could have done it already in these three days of combat. Once the Russians owned the skies over Ukraine, they could have done whatever they wanted with the Ukrainian army. They could have annihilated it, just blown it to smithereens and blown away the entire population of Ukraine if they wanted to. They could cause a major, major humanitarian crisis if they wanted to, and they obviously don't. How do I know this? Because they haven't done it. They have had the opportunity for three days to do it, and they haven't done it. I'm doing this stupid video from a hotel room in downtown Kiev, and I'm going to upload it to the internet. Do you think I'd be able to do it if the Russians were really serious about conquering Ukraine? They want to capture it, understand that, and understand that you in the West, you are being goaded into thinking that Putin and the Russians are like evil antichrist. You don't understand why the Russians are invading. And your political leadership, Boris Johnson, Joe Biden, all these people, they don't want you to understand, of course not. They want you to just demonize, just to take the easy way out. They want you to imagine that this is a Marvel comic book movie 
and that, you know, there are white hats and black hats. Good guys, bad guys. Yeah, we gotta kill the bad guys because we're the good guys. Yeah. It's so naive. The Russians don't want to harm Ukraine. They would have destroyed Ukraine if they wanted to. But they don't. They want to capture it in one piece. Now, you can say that uh, Russia's motivations are this, that, the other. It doesn't matter. You have to look at the practical reality that is taking place now. What really bothers me and perhaps this isn't a wise thing for me to say while I'm still in Ukraine under the Zelensky regime. What really bothers me is that the Zelensky regime has no trouble causing a humanitarian crisis. In fact, they welcome a humanitarian crisis. They would love to see dead Ukrainians. And I know this for a fact. And do you know how I know this for a fact? Because the Zelensky government has been handing out AK-47s willy-nilly to the civilian population. As I understand it, they've already handed out 10,000 AK-47s and munitions to match. Now, you see, if you've never had any kind of military experience, you, with a weapon like that, you can become extremely dangerous to all the people around you and to yourself. It takes training to operate a firearm. You have to know what you're doing. It's, it's not a casual thing, okay? It's not like in the movies. It's very, very dangerous. And you can harm yourself before you harm anybody else. And the harm you can cause to others is, you know, it's incalculable and, and you can't take it back. Now, the Zelensky regime is handing out these weapons, teaching people how to use Molotov cocktails, how to make Molotov cocktails and use them as, themselves. They want to foment the people to fight the war against the Russians. And the thing is, see, the Russians have professional soldiers. Now, these professional soldiers, you know, they carry a weapon. They know what to do with the weapon. If they see somebody armed, be it a man in, in a uniform or just a civilian with an AK-47, well, they're going to shoot him, okay? And so that civilian will be dead, and that will present a great photo op now, won't it? So that Zelensky can wrangle some European country or the Americans or whomever to come in and get involved in this war and potentially escalate the situation to levels that are unimaginable. The Zelensky regime is doing something frankly evil because it is evil to put civilians, to encourage civilians to do something that incredibly dangerous and irresponsible. The Zelensky regime has also put uh, heavy weaponry in civilian population centers. Now, these heavy weapons, howitzers and whatnot, they're dangerous. And so the Russian army has every right and obligation to destroy such heavy weapons. But of course, when trying to destroy such weapons, it's inevitable that you're not gonna quite hit the weapons when you try to aim for them. You're gonna hit around the weapons. And therefore, if these weapons are in the middle of apartment complexes, you're gonna have Russians shelling apartment complexes, killing innocent civilians. The Zelensky regime is putting these weapons in the middle of populated areas precisely because they want to have this happen. And I'll tell you something else that the Zelensky regime is doing. They are forcibly conscripting men between the ages of 18 and 60. They are not allowing them to leave the country, and if they try to leave the country, they are arrested and forcibly conscripted, that is, forcibly put into the Ukrainian army. Now, what has happened because of this? Well, just about every man between the ages of 18 and 60 is running away from the cities. That's why there are so many refugees. It's not that they're seriously thinking that the Russians are going to shell and destroy their apartments or their homes or whatnot. They're afraid of getting arrested and forcibly conscripted. The women and the young children and old men are having to hide these men who are between the ages of 18 and 60. And by the way, this isn't something that I heard. People that I know personally, people that I do business with, I know them, I know them. I've gone drinking with them, eating with them, doing deals with them. They've had to leave Kiev for fear of being forcibly pressed 
into the Ukrainian army. Middle-aged men, farts like me, who are out of shape, you know, we're real good at some business deal, but crappy at uh, carrying a backpack and a weapon uh, with no experience whatsoever in such activity. Mm -hmm. And the uh, Ukrainian uh, government, the Zelensky regime, is doing this. And why do you think they're doing it? Well, first of all, you don't forcibly conscript men into your army if you think that you're winning. Now, do you? Of course not. Number one. And number two, by having this forcible conscription, you scare all the men and you create, all on your own, a whole class of refugees, of people fleeing the cities. They're not afraid of the Russians. They're afraid of the Ukrainian regime that is trying to press them into service. That's what's going on. And so you see all the video images of people fleeing the city, and you in the West, you in the United States and Western Europe think, oh, they're afraid of the Russians. No, they're afraid of the Zelensky regime. But I have to say that the issue of handing out weapons to civilians who don't know how to handle them. And that is the thing I find most despicable. Because they are willing to have these poor civilians who know nothing of weaponry become martyrs. Because the Russian soldiers who see some civilian with a gun, well, what do you think he's going to do? Hmm? He's going to shoot him. And that innocent civilian who doesn't even know how to hold the damn weapon is going to die needlessly for nothing, for absolutely nothing. And I find that despicable. I find that truly evil. Mm -hmm. Also, the Zelensky regime can get a nice photo op. That's what's going on. And if you want to say that the message I'm saying is pro-Russian or pro-Putin or I'm a Putin stooge or useful idiot or whatever, fine. I don't care. I mean, I don't really care your opinion, man. I don't give a fuck what you think about me. I'm telling you the truth. I'm here. I'm here in Kiev, in the downtown, waiting for the Russians to invade the damn place, huh? So I know what I'm talking about. None of this stuff is appearing in the mainstream media, now is it, huh? Because I'm not following the American or European mainstream media because I know it's just a pack of lies. But probably what I'm saying in this video, you haven't heard it. Well, now you're hearing it. Hmm? And think a little bit, huh? I mean, in this channel, what have I always told you, stupid motherfuckers? Huh? Think for yourself. Think. Look at the information that you have available. And ask yourself why something is happening the way it's happening. Hmm? It's not arbitrary. It's not by chance. People have thought through what they are doing. The Russians have certainly thought through what they're doing. The best that we can hope for is that the Zelensky regime fails in its attempt to wrangle in the Europeans and the Americans into this war. And the Zelensky regime collapses or flees or whatever. And Russia is able to take Ukraine in one piece without harming too many people. And that's the best that we can hope for. Or if not... The whole country will be destroyed. Millions of people will be displaced, hundreds of thousands, perhaps even millions killed. And this is the exact same thing that happened in Iraq. Let's hope that we don't have a second Iraq. 